Hi drummers, hope you're well. This is a little video for you about developing the groove skills you need for grade three and four drums. Now, I think this is a really exciting point for a drummer to hit. You might have found that you tried to play grooves a little bit like this before, and when you get to grade three and grade four, you start seeing those kicks and those snares coming in between the hi-hats, and uh, it just gets a little bit more tricky. So this video is all about uh, some core grooves that are gonna help you develop the skills you need to play that. So basically what happens is at grade one and grade two, everything sounds a bit like this in terms of the grooves that you play. So nice, cool mu uh, musical variations, but the kick and the snare variations are always in sync with your eighth note flow on the hi-hat. At grade three and four, what starts to happen is things like this. And we just start to hear that funkiness and that cool kind of... Uh, in between or in the middle feel of the snare and the kick dropping between. So this is seven great grooves that don't necessarily feature note for note uh, in grade three or four, but they just have, for my money, all the core skills you need to develop. And we'll talk a little bit about kick drum technique here and, uh, and just generally how you build these skills up. Right, groove number one on our sheet, which you need to, um, if you go to the description below, check out the sheet music. Groove number one looks like this and sounds like this. And lots of drummers uh, find that they sort of naturally play that groove like they've heard it by ear and picked it up. And it's one of those grooves that just gets uh, moved around a lot. Uh, so this might be that you've already played it, but this is the first time you've kind of seen it formally written out if you're at the kind of grade three level. This is all about the skip note. So the skip note is the little snare drum that, like I've been saying, goes in between the hi-hats on the uh of beat one, right? So one and two and uh. So if you need to, with this, just go slow and really focus on dropping that snare truly in the middle of the two hi-hats uh, that it goes between, the and of beat two and beat three. You might find, if this is the first time you've ever played it, that your hi-hat stick, like my right stick, as you're seeing here, kind of goes with the snare drum. So I distinctly remember about 25 years ago this happening. at first and my right stick instinctively going with the snare drum. So that's the that's the game here, just getting that snare drum to drop in between the hi-hats. First big like core skill for grade two grooving. Here it is, groove number one. And I can't stress this enough, just go super slow, man. Even if you have to go like out of time at first, slow those moments right down so you can just allow your brain and your nervous system really your hands and your feet and your brain working together to see those combination of things and then at first it feels a bit awkward and deliberate if it's the first time you've done it but very quickly that will turn into something smooth you can do automatically true second nature groove number two on the sheet is really similar to that it's another chance to work with that hand coordination and that little skip note it's just got two kicks after it on three and here's groove number two So same advice applies, just go nice and slow with that and have some fun dropping those skip notes in. Once you've got it up to speed, it'll sound like this. Groove number two. And that's a brilliant little groove to have up your sleeve. I remember having loads of fun when I was about, yeah, 13, 14, like first getting the skip note on the snare happening, just jamming along to the music and loving that. It's a really nice one to have. Um, one little thing about the skip note is you can always play it as a ghosted note as well. So at first, you play everything the same volume, just get the coordination sorted. But once you've got the hang, the big snare drum hits on two and four, you could try doing those as a big backbeat hit. But the little skip note on the art of beat two, you could play that more softly like this. which is kind of fun and cool and uh, can add a nice bit of texture and something that you start to see really at grade three, grade four level is the idea of two different levels going on on the snare, man. You've got your hi-hat and your kick, but then you've got this, the loud backbeat snare, but then the sort of ghosted, more quiet notes, just sort of decorating and filling out the groove in between. So that could be quite fun as well.
All right, now groove number three, we're getting into the kick drum stuff you'll need for grade three in particular here. Here through grooves three, four, and five, we're gonna build up uh, the kind of core, most important bit of kick drum thing you'll do at this level, which is the bomb, the two quick kicks, right? On groove number three, we've got a kick drum on beat one. We've got a snare drum on beat two. We've got another kick drum on the uh. So this is in the same position as the snare skip note was before, the uh of beat two. We've then also got a kick drum on the and of beat three. This is groove number three. Here it comes. So again, like the big challenge here at first is just getting that kick to drop in between the higher hats, that one on the uh of beat two, and just go slow. Again, you'll instinctively, for a lot of people, if this is new, find your right stick or your hi-hat stick at least going with the kick drum. So I remember doing this a lot. And if that happens a bit cool, that's at first that's totally cool. Uh, just persevere, man. Go slow. Guide yourself through it if you need to. If it gets to the point if you have to just say the notes out loud as in uh like so you got to beat two and then you go hi-hat on its own kick drum on its own hi-hat on its own and so on that's fine man if you need to do that slow and deliberate at first is fine it turns into what appears to be instinct later with a bit of repetition man like in less time than you would think uh, so if you need to do that totally fine man that's cool I think often when people find these grooves tricky or they say that thing that people say a lot, which is, I'm struggling with this. I think very often, in my opinion, and in my experience doing these sessions for quite a lot of years, it comes down to a, often a quite basic misunderstanding about how our brains work and how musical ability works. And certainly in terms of like coordination on the drums works. I think there's this idea floating around that coordination is just this thing that you kind of mysteriously have or don't have um i think that's basically nonsense uh when it comes down to it and and these this coordination stuff you really do just build it i mean i play the drums for a living happily and uh which is a, a, an amazing thing which i'll never take for granted when i did my first ever drum lesson there's no suggestion that i walked out of the lesson and my teacher went wow that guy's going to be a professional drummer i just i just sort of did it i just sort of got on with it so that i really do think you build these skills man and um don't get sucked into that way of thinking of oh i'm i don't have good coordination it's nonsense man you just you just build it show your brain the right stuff first go slow and then repetition builds it from there and the truth of it is in my experience i'm going to level with you a bit of real talk most people just don't bother right so just take the time bother like sh go slow build it up man you'll get this going in no time genius is basically just perseverance in disguise i'm convinced of that right now anyway that's that this this is groove now number four we're playing the kick drum in the same position as we did in, in number three in the middle in the gap there but we're also playing a kick straight after on beat three itself this is the big one this is the big moment that people say quote unquote I'm struggling for grade three. This is where you need to slow down, man. This one goes like this. Groove number four. You getting that? So the first kick is on the uh of beat two. One and two and uh on its own in the gap in the middle and then you've got the kick again on beat three in sync with the hi-hat now this is the bit again where most people say i'm struggling i'm finding it tricky like this will suddenly appear in a grade three piece and it's kind of a bit of a, a bit of a shock to the system usually so uh the thing to do go slow uh say the notes out loud if you need to you know hi-hat on its own kick on its own hi-hat and kick in that manner and just keep building it like that basically little bit by little bit now quick word about bass drum technique i'm not going to dwell on this here and i've got videos that describe bass drum technique which i'll link to in the description below in particular playing the two quick doubles i would strongly recommend the heel up technique super quick version of this the two versions hey can you see my foot here i guess you can you're good so the um i was gonna do it on here so you can see you can see my foot clearly yeah nice so heel down is where you play the uh heel of your foot but on the ground and you're using your ankle like a hinge nothing against that i think it's great loads of great drummers get that 
going and world-class drummers play that really fast. That's great. Uh, for me, the heel up technique has always been a winner. That's when you're bouncing on the ball of your foot. I always feel like less effort was involved. And for me, that works great. I think that's a real, real winner. Um, when you play two quick notes, a very short version, well, one single note on its own, you press down from the ball of your foot, your big toe, your leg will hop up as a result and your foot flops back down on the pedal playing the note. So, bom. When you play two quick notes, you're basically going to go bom, 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 bom. You see that? So on the first note, what you'll do is you'll play it, your heel stays up, and then for the second note, bom, you take off again and your heel goes down. So uh, one note again, bom, two notes, bom, 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 bom. You see that? Bom, 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 bom. So your heel kind of stays up for the first one, bom, bom. But long story short, you're basically bouncing on the ball of your foot with a nice loose leg. There's not really any lifting involved in the leg. I think of it as all the movement comes from the, the ball of your foot, your big toe, if you like, as you press down. And it's like if you did it with both your feet and you were standing, um, like standing up, you'd go, bom. You see what I mean? A hop, a true little hop. That's the idea. Uh, bass drum is something that people massive drummers massively get into a, a model overthinking and think like spend so much time thinking and talking on internet forums or the rest of it about technique they forget to go to their drums and just play the most important variable that everything else will turn to dust under the weight of in my opinion is practice so just do it go to your kit and play uh, other things people ask about are the, uh, the tension that of the spring stick it in the middle again not nothing like as important a variable as just going to your kit and playing it's just time and repetition is how you, how you do this as long as you've got a solid technique bouncing on the ball of your foot uh, the only variable you need to worry about after that is doing it repetition man you'll get the hang of that you can also practice on the floor remember you don't need to necessarily be at a pedal all the time bum, 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 bum. that's a really great way to do it if you can do it on the floor and it sounds good it'll work on a pedal so uh, pedal tension in the middle i reckon or to suit but it's certainly not anything to worry about um and assuming your pedal works fine just stick it in the middle the other thing people sometimes ask me about is burying the beater in the head versus having it bounce back i don't think it's necessarily a huge deal it does depend a little bit what style of music you're playing if you're playing rock pop r&b anything where you want a big thud of a bass drum sound i don't think of this as a big deal typically a bass drum in that case would be set up in a way that it wouldn't sound massively different either way it's probably not a great idea to absolutely crush it into the head so when i'm talking about that little technique of playing bomb bomb whether you're playing one note or two notes the fact that you are always finishing with your foot kind of flopping down on the pedal bomb means that the beater will come back from the head a little bit anyway so as long as you're not absolutely crushing it into the head i think for most styles of like contemporary music you're fine if you're playing like an undampened super tightly tuned open jazzy bass drum it makes much more of a difference in that case you want to definitely take the time for the beta, beta to really come back off the drum head so it can sing if again to repeat if you're playing rock pop r b you want the bass drum to go bomb I don't think it's a massive deal. I wouldn't crush the beater into the head, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a big deal. That's my opinion on that. Cool, man. All right, I'm going to go back to the groove here. This is oh, hang on. This is groove uh, number four. Here it comes. Now remember, go as slow as you like. If you need to, do this. And really focus on that first one being in the gap between the hi-hats and the second one being in sync with the hi-hat. So my experience, a uh, high 90% of people who do this don't practice it slow enough. That's the reason you're finding it difficult. Okay, number five is the same thing, bob on, but there's another kick on the end of beat three. This is groove number five. And like Radiohead Creep, if you ever heard that song. Uh, again, that's a classic grade three style groove that people often say they're finding tricky. And if people don't practice it in the right way, can end up taking months to really nail down man because you've got to go slow show yourself the stuff like show your brain the, the combinations and then build it up really simple man like just keep on the case with it uh, you'll get it that's the way to practice it no other mystery number six 
and seven are connected here. Number six, you've got a little kick that drops in between the hi-hats on the E of beat three, like this. So again, in the middle, in the gap with that kick between the hi-hats, make sure you are truly playing in the gap between the hi-hats and not changing the flow of the hi-hats. So sometimes you hear people playing. And funny things like that. Keep the hi-hat dead solid, evenly spaced. Okay, go as slow as you like with that. And then lastly, number seven, we're back to the bob bomb, the two quick kicks, that quick double. Same position for the first kick on the E of beat three. Second one is with the hi-hat. This is groove number seven. What I'm going to do here at the end now is I'm going to play through the whole lot, right? So first I'm going to play like moderate speed, and I reckon this would be a good aim to get to. If you're first taking these on, first getting to that grade three kind of level, aim to play at this kind of speed. I'll do four times around each groove. Uh, I'll then play them a bit faster. But what I'll do as well is I'll put in the uh, pin in the pin comment here a timestamp to this point of the video. So if you don't want to hear all this waffle every time, but you do want to hear all these grooves played one after the other, so you can play along or or uh, practice in that way. Um, That'll be what I'll do. So here we go, four times each, moderate speed. I'm going to go through the whole lot. Groove number one, two, three, four. Groove number two. Number six. Groove number seven. Cool, so that'd be a nice little point to get to. If you can play those all at that moderate speed, that'd be great. And now just for fun, I'm going to play them a bit faster. I'll do three bars of groove, and then the fourth bar, I'll play a little drum fill. And I'll rattle through the whole lot. Here we go. Groove number one. Cool, man. And that might be maybe 
that speed or a bit faster might be what you'd need to get up to if you like grade three or grade four. So I hope that's cool. I hope that all makes a bit of sense. I think almost all of the key like groove based coordination that you'd need for those uh, two grades is in there. Hope that's cool. Hope that all makes a bit of sense. Any questions about anything, give us a shout. Thanks for watching as always. Please like, share and subscribe. Please follow Mike Barnes Drums on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and LinkedIn. Uh, thanks to all the lovely people who've supported this channel uh, by buying me a coffee, but also by um, becoming members, monthly members uh, in, in this new uh, thing that I have, the monthly membership of this channel. Um, very, very cool. And I was recording a video earlier for a member. What you get is if you become a monthly member, video responses for me. So I'll support your drumming and help you out as best I can um, by recording your video responses. If you have a question or a, something like the one I did today, if somebody needed something demonstrating. So I played that through for them. I'll give you a video response if you've got a question about technique or a grade piece or whatever. Um, that's a, one of the features you can use. There's also um, a members only video once a week. There's also um, a, a cool little thing I've put together all the main playlists for this channel. So There's like six, more than 600 videos I've recorded here. So like playlists like kick drum uh, technique, you know, hand technique, uh, like all stuff like that, all in a playlist form for you. So all those features will be available to you. Plus you get a shout out on the channel as well. Um, and so that's up and running. And thanks to all the lovely people who've been doing uh, lessons on Zoom and Skype. It's been really cool. And obviously the strange situation we currently find ourselves in with um, coronavirus, uh, where we're all kind of stuck indoors. And um, it's something that I've always done a little bit of and I've stepped it up uh, quite a bit. Um, all my regulars have been, have been uh, having their sessions by Zoom and uh, thank uh, thankfully and in a really cool way like some some of you guys who watch these videos have been checking in for zoom lessons as well it's been absolutely brilliant it's on this setup here for now obviously while i'm while we're all at home um but it's a it's been an amazing thing and i've really loved doing that and that's going to be active the next few weeks uh if you want to sign up for a session um that'll be in the description as well thanks a million as always any questions about anything give us a shout i'll see you soon thanks a lot